Hello, hello. This is Donna Marie Johnson coming to you with episode two of Plant Your Seeds of Transformation podcast show. And you can check out the show pages at plantyourseeds.show. All right, again, I'm Donna Marie Johnson. If you want to look me up on any of the social networks, either look for my full name, Donna Marie Johnson, or use my handle, which is lead like a queen. I am so happy to be coming back on to the show to share um, from my heart about some things that are extremely important for me. And I believe that some of this may resonate very uh, deeply for some of you also. So um, let me do a little bit of a recap. And somewhere in 2019, 2020, 2021, I made a promise to myself, to God, to my family, that I was going to divorce perfectionism. What I mean by divorcing perfectionism is that I was no longer going to allow my life to be run by an unhealthy quest for um, perfection. It's not the same as excellence. There's a difference. And I didn't understand that before I went on that journey to divorce perfectionism. And so today I'm going to share a bit, bit of an update um, on this, but I, I am going to kind of go back a little bit and, and discuss some of what I shared in the blog article. Um, if you want to look at the blog article, it's going to be on my main blog at leadlikeaqueen.biz or .com, it doesn't matter which one you use. So for the Plant Your Seeds show, I'm bringing this topic forward because this is such an important thing to understand it, in my opinion, especially for women leaders. Sometimes we are trained to be perfectionists. It's insidious. Um, uh, and in the Black community, a lot of folks now are having conversations about what Black excellence is, and also of toxic Black excellence. There's a difference. Um, there is this unattainable version of excellence that looks like it's a great idea <laughs> to promote that with with you, with our youth especially and college students, but it's actually, it can be very destructive because it's not attainable. There are he healthy versions of excellence, but um, yeah, so let's dig on into this thing a little bit, a little bit further so I can share more so that you can understand what I'm talking about. First of all, Divorcing perfectionism means that I'm not just leaving behind um, an unhealthy, unrealistic quest for perfection. I'm also embracing my trust in God. That means that I trust him to help me do whatever needs to be done in whatever way it needs to be done so that it is good enough so that I can be content with the results. Not complacent though. I'm not talking about being lazy. I'm not talking about being average. That's not the same thing. I'm talking about being happy that what I've done is good. It's good enough. It's excellent enough. I'm not saying doing sloppy work. I'm not saying doing, doing things that um, you think are a good idea, you, you know, kind of like throwing 
spaghetti at the wall and hoping that it's going to stick. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about trusting that whatever it is that you've put your hand to, God is going to bless that thing. And being content with that for now. Um, the other thing is that <laughs> everything in life is progressive. Nothing's going to be absolutely perfect right now in this moment. But it can get better over time. So we may be able to put something together, for instance, a blog post. Um, as a matter of fact, I just found out that the blog post I referred you to that talked about my divorce from perfectionism, something happened with, with the blog post and some of the text is messed up in there. But it's okay. It's okay. It gets the point across. And I can go in and fix it in the future. Um, that's something that can be edited. It could be edited at any time. I do not have to make it perfect right this second, right now. But, um, you know, a lot of times with the perfectionism, that's toxic and unhealthy. There's a drive to make every little detail absolutely perfect right this second. And then five minutes later, <laughs> you look at that blog article again and you realize, oh no, I missed a period. I'm, I forgot a comma. And, you know, so you never published the blog post because you're so busy trying to make sure every single little detail is perfect. However, let's say that you have a... Um, Let's say that you have a content calendar, um, a specific or a specific campaign that you're working on. That article needs to get out and it needs to get out right now. Are you going to keep looking at it every five minutes to, to tweak and change every little thing? Now, I'm not saying don't spell check. <laughs> I'm not saying don't do the standard things that need to be done. I am saying that when your perfectionism, when your unhealthy, toxic quest for every little detail being absolutely perfect, when that interferes with you being effective, then that's a problem. And so just want to encourage you to, to think about the impact that being totally perfect all the time can have not just on um, your mental and emotional state, but also on how you're showing up to others, how you're impacting others. Is it keeping you back? Is it holding you back from, from coming to completion on some things that aren't necessarily absolutely perfect, but that are good enough and need to be released so that other people can benefit from them? For instance, are you working on a book manuscript that you've been working on for five years? When are you gonna release that thing? All right, so being content with something, it doesn't mean that you're being complacent. It means that you're leaving room for improvement later. You don't necessarily have to make it perfect. Right this second, you can improve it later. I don't, if you're in the business world, you may have heard the term continuous improvement process. In the business world, um, through the project management avenues and all of the, all of the different um, engineering protocols that are out there, they understand that you improve things over time. You're not going to be able to get every detail right immediately, but you can work over on it over time and you can also incorporate your team, your support team. Now, if you're a solo entrepreneur like me currently, Lord knows I, I do plan to build my team again and need to, but I'm not there quite yet working on that though. Um, you have to be able to lean on your team also. It's not just about you're doing everything yourself. And that's the other part of 
perfectionism that's toxic. When <laughs> you're doing everything yourself all the time and never have any kind of help or support, even if it's not somebody that you're hiring as an employee, it can be a contractor, a consultant, or a coach um, that you're helping, that, that you're hiring or paying to help you. It could be an intern. Uh, an unpaid intern can help with things like blog articles. You can't hire unpaid interns for, for things like sales. You have to pay them for things like that. But for like a blog, a blog article that's going to be published for free, you can hire interns for those things. And some of these students are very gifted and talented. And that would leave room for them to grow. And it would bless them um, to have that experience. And it would bless you to have their help. So having that perfectionist, uh, that toxic perfectionist view of things can hold you back from being a blessing to other people um, in a lot of different ways. Now, another thing, <laughs> when another key to setting aside that toxic perfectionism is being grateful. When I realized, I'm talking about myself now, when I realized that part of my perfectionistic tendencies also led me to complain and moan and groan and discount the value of what God was doing in me, through me, with me, and causing me to be ungrateful. When I realized um, that, that really helped give me some perspective on this topic of unhealthy, toxic perfectionism. It can really make you be ungrateful. And that is not something that I wanna be. That's a core value for me, being grateful, because I, I recognize that um, God can really use anything in my life. <laughs> He can turn any situation into a blessing and a benefit for me and for other people if I let him. But when you're holding back and holding on to, to things that you need to release, it can cause you to be, um, to be ungrateful. All right. Another piece. Yes, I'm, I'm digging deep on this. So in addition to um, learning to be more content, boosting your gratefulness, in addition to those two things, staying present in the moment. Most of the time when I was really um, living in that toxic perfectionistic mode, I was not present with the people that are important to me. I was so obsessed. So, um, I forgot the word I was gonna use, but anyway, I was so obsessed about fixing something with my blog or with my business or something else with school. I was so obsessed about it that I could not stay present with the people that I was with. My mind was in a whole nother place. That's not healthy. And um, when you are doing your work, you need to be doing your work. And when you're not doing your work, you need to be able to let that go. Now, some of the tools that help me, um, that have helped me to start letting that go are tools that I've learned from coaches. One of those is learning how to use journaling in a way where I can do what's called, some people call brain dumps. And that basically helps me to release all of those thoughts and ideas and um, the reminders that I have for myself about things that I do want to fix, not out of being toxically perfectionistic, but things that just need to get done putting those things down in a list on paper 
and then just releasing it and going and having dinner with my with my family it's priceless that's just a priceless um tool to use so there's a nugget for you doing your brain dumps in a written form um and i will I'll be honest, I don't always just do it in a written form. And even if I do um, use paper and pen, I take a picture of it and I may put it into my digital journal. I am an iOS user. I use PC too, but iOS is my favorite. And I like Apple computers. I like the iPhones and the apps that can be used on the iPhones um, also work on the Apple computers. So you're able to take whatever's in your phone and automatically be able to see it on your laptop or your desktop if you're using Apple computers. That also can, that also can work along the same lines if you're using an app that is both, is available both on um, Android and PCs also. So no matter what you're using, if you're if you're using an Android, I would recommend an app called Evernote. Um, for but for Apple computers and iOS, I use a an app called Note. And I like Note because um, it already comes. It's called Notes, not Note Notes. Um, I like Notes because it comes with your iPhone, iPad, Apple computers, no extra fee. But it has, um, they've updated it in recent years and it has almost all the same features as Evernote and some of the other um, note taking apps. So I just want to encourage you that if you are struggling with this toxic perfectionism, learn from, get a coach. Um, I'm a coach. Get a coach that can help you learn tools and techniques that you can start to implement to help you get past that perfectionism. Get out of your head and stay present in the moment. When I started shifting in that area. I actually had a foster dog at that time. Her name was Maggie. Loved my Maggie dog. She was the sweetest dog. I called her the smiley queen. Um, <laughs> she loved to smile. She kept me grounded. She kept me present in the moment. Um, I'm not saying you have to go get a dog to learn how to be more present, but um, if you have children, if you have a dog, if you have a cat, you know, if you have any kind of person or animal that you are taking care of and you truly love them and want to lavish your love on them, that can help you um, be more motivated to stay present in the moment. Now, the, one, of the, one of the other things I was gonna mention is that love for myself, as well as love for other people has also helped to motivate me to um, get past this toxic perfectionism. And staying present in the moment is part of that. But it's not just that. Being committed to this process of letting go of this perfectionism, there's a huge um, the fact that I want to love myself better, take better care of my health, mental and physical. And I want to love my family better and my friends. And if I had a pet, my pet better. Those are, that love is a huge motivator to let go of that toxic perfectionism. And as I said earlier, trusting God, I recognize that that toxic perfectionism was a manifestation of me not trusting God. Because I trust God, that's how I'm willing to let go of that toxic perfectionism. Recognizing that God has grace for me 
even if I mess up, he still got me. He still got me. And so I don't have to be a perfectionist because I have his grace and I trust him. I trust him to help me even when I'm not perfect and I'm never perfect. And he, he's always there for me. He always comes through for me. He always helps me. And so that leads me to this next bullet point of living from my core. The core of who I am is rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. In the Holy Bible, it says that he lives in me and I live in him. And because I know that, I have complete and utter faith and trust in God. I'm living from my core. I'm manifesting on the outside what's really going on on the inside. And what's really going on on the inside is that I know Jesus loves me. I know God has grace and love for me. I trust him. And I'm living from my core. So as I live from my core, and that's manifesting on my outside, that perfectionism has no more place with me. And finally, there is a true complexity in my life that many people have commented on. If you know anything about me, you know that in addition, in addition to being a wife, I'm a spousal caregiver. Um, I'm actually paid to care for my husband. I was unpaid. Um, I was an unpaid caregiver for my, for my spouse for several years. And in addition to caring for my husband, I'm also a mom to two young adults and one teenager. And they still need me. It doesn't matter how, that they're older. They still need me. And we live in a multi-generational household. My mom lives with us. And there are times when she needs me. And so this is definitely a complex life that I live. Um, on top of all of that, I just completed my master's degree in executive leadership. And I'm back in school again, <laughs> getting my MBA in executive coaching. So yeah. I have a complex life. I also just recently started working out because like I said, I'm focused on loving myself and others. So therefore the working out. Um, and I also recently up level my daily Bible study um, devotionals. Um, found a wonderful, wonderful Bible devotional called First 15. The guy that leads that is got a voice like butter. <laughs> and I believe that um, he, he adds so much value to the world through a 15 minute podcast that he publishes every single morning. I'm very grateful for that. It's a big help. But all of this complexity, what I'm saying is all of this complexity is nothing to God. God knows me. He knows what I need in every area of my life. He knows how complex my life is. And he's right here with me, helping me, walking me through all of it. I can't do everything, but the things I can do, I can do those well because I trust him. Not because I'm all that, because I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I've had to cancel so many things. As you see, I, I'm just now getting back to this podcast and I hardly did any episodes last year. Um, yeah, my life is complex, but I have grace over my life. And when I need to make adjustments and changes, I'm, I can do that without feeling like um, <laughs> I used to feel really bad about not being able to follow through on some of the things that I really wanted to do, like this podcast. But I recognize that I have grace. I don't have to make force myself 
to do things that are just um, not in alignment <laughs> with my current needs. And so I am at this point, I'm working really, really diligently to um, get all of my time lined up so that I can be much more um, consistent and dynamic with my podcasts. But until then, it's just me talking with you, sharing from my heart, sharing some of the wisdom that I've been learning so that prayerfully you can learn from me from both my strengths as well as my weaknesses. Hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes. Um, one of the, the main things that I um, shared through the blog posts that I created at leadlikeaqueen.com, one of the main things that I shared is that I had to step back from doing um, a lot of things because of family challenges that were going on that were very urgent and I needed to address those immediately. And so I had to pretty much shut down a lot of the things that I was doing, including I had to step back from school for a little while. But as you can see, um, I finished, I finished school. I finished that degree. Um, and it was the grace of God, to be honest. Um, I'm not gonna get into all the details with that right now, but suffice it to say that I have favor <laughs> and God saw me through that period. He saw me through that period where I had to pull back from school and he saw me through the period where I was able to um, make an appeal to the school and get back in school, you know? And I'm grateful. I'm very grateful for that. So yeah. So if my life is as complex it is, as it is, I'm pretty sure some of y'all have some similar situations. You are, you might be uh, mothers and wives, you might have little kids, you might be caregiving for an elderly parent, um, you might be a person who yourself has a, a disability, physical disability or mental health disability, you might be a person who um, has made a decision to live a certain lifestyle, like maybe, maybe vegan or something like that, you know, all of us have our different things, but if you live from a place of gratefulness, live from your core, knowing who you really are, you'll be fine. And you don't have to um, make every little tiny thing perfect every single second of every single day. That's not how God wants you to live. That's not or at least I believe <laughs> that's not how God wants you to live. He wants you to be able to live from a place of trust, trusting that he's with you, he's got you, and everything's going to be okay, and it might not be perfect right this second, but you can improve things later. Yes. So that is my take on this topic of toxic perfectionism. If you have any questions for me or feedback for me, I would love to hear from you. Go over to plantyourseeds.show, click on the contact button there, and you'll be able to go in and, and submit any feedback or comments you have for me. If you're using Spotify, you may be able to leave an audio message or anchor. You may be able to leave an audio message for me also. I'm going to see if I can set those features up. I've, I'm still learning how to use those types of features. And so I'll do what I can. But if it's not perfect, it's okay. Just go over to plantyourseeds.show. All right. So I'm Donna Marie Johnson. You can reach out to me anytime through plantyourseeds.show. You can also check out my contact information on the contact page at plantyourseeds.show forward slash contact. I am so grateful to have you as a part of my audience. Um, I, in addition to asking you to reach out and provide feedback, if you're using a platform that allows you to rate the show, if you'll do that, it really helps so that 
A, I'll know that I'm on the right path and I'm providing value and this is helpful. And also it will help the podcast platforms to see that this is a good show that they should be promoting so that other people can can, uh, listen in as well. If you would like to support the show, A, share it. So after you get past the, the review piece, leaving me five stars or however many stars you want to leave, um, leaving a feedback or a comment on the show or sending me a message through plant your, plantyourseeds.show. In addition to those ways of support, you can also now become a patron through my Patreon page for Lead Like a Queen. So you can either go search for Lead Like a Queen on Patreon or just go to plantyourseeds.show and scroll down. You'll see um, either in the menu bar or in the middle of the page, you'll see the link so that you can go over and sign up as a patron. One of the perks includes a coffee mug and I will be leaving a... um, a picture of the coffee mug on the website. Actually, it's on the patron, the Patreon page. Um, yeah, you'll get that after your third month of being a member at the second tier level. The first tier level is only $3 a month to get started as at the first tier level. And that level gives you access to our group on Facebook. So when you become a patron, you need to make sure that um, when you try to join the group that you're using the same email address so that I'll know that you're a patron. All right, I would absolutely be honored to have you as part of the group, um, to have you as a patron um, and to be able to send you my coffee mug. Let me, let, let me tell you what the coffee mug says. The coffee mug actually says, Small business is a misnomer. Hashtag small biz, big impact. Yep. Cool coffee mug. It helps us, helps me (laughs) to remember that no matter how big or small my business is, I'm making a big impact in the world by the things that I'm doing. And I want to help you to be reminded of that too. So I hope you will join as a patron and get that coffee mug. All right, I am signing off. I hope that um, this has been a blessing to you and I hope you let me know if it's been a blessing to you. This is Donna Marie Johnson. You can find me on any of the socials under the alias Lead Like a Queen. So at Lead Like a Queen on any of the main social sites, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, (laughs) Um, and like I said, Patreon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.